Fast Forward Productions. The women are speaking. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the One Broke Actress Podcast, an honest account of actor life plus a few lessons I learn in the process. I am your host, Sam Valentine, and welcome back to our Headshot Photographer mini series. If I could sing, I would sing that line for you, but I promise you that you do not want that. There's a reason I talk on a microphone and not sing. I digress. Today, we are back on the roll. If you missed our previous episodes, we are doing a series of episodes with headshot photographers from all different markets, all different specialties, and they are all bringing their insight and answering your top questions here on the podcast. So you'll notice between these episodes, I ask them very similar questions because I think everyone actually has kind of similar answers, but they all have their own verbiage. But I think it's really important when you go into a headshot session to see someone's vibe and see what you like to be around because headshots can be kind of vulnerable. They can be pretty stressful. And if that is something that stresses you out, by the way, the link is in the notes for this podcast to join the headshot class that myself and Gabrielle Binloss are teaching for the public, not just our online community on February 16th, unless we book something because we've Both have pretty good headshots. (laughs) Okay, back to today's episode. I cannot tell you how exciting it is for me to read this person's bio because it says she picked up a camera over 10 years ago and I shot with her 10 years ago. (laughs) So this makes me very, very happy. Ladies and gentlemen, back for her second time on the One Broke Actress podcast, headshot photographer Leah Hubner is in the house. She is a light in this business and she came from an acting background. Once her photography started to take off, that has become her genuine passion in life. And she is so damn good at it. If you are in Los Angeles and you scroll through somebody's IMDb, you see Leah Hubner headshots. You look at anybody who's in iSpot commercials, you see Leah Hubner headshots. It just so happens she's also an incredible advocate, outstanding activist, and general amazing person in this community. So when Leah doesn't have a camera in her hand, she is out in the world making a difference. She is extremely, exceptionally knowledgeable about so many topics. I always learn something when I talk with her. In fact, we kind of drift into a gender conversation in this podcast that I think is really interesting that I had never thought about before. I think by the end of this podcast, you might just think Leah is also your vibe. You will get confused when you shoot with her because you'll be talking and having a laugh the whole time and you'll be really unsure if you took a single good photo. But I promise you at the end of your session, when you look back at the photos, you're going to be shocked at the ample hundreds, maybe thousands of options you have to narrow them down from. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please enjoy Leah Hubner. So continuing with our headshot photographers, I am here with another one of my favorite headshot photographers in the whole wide world who's shot me since like 2017, I think, when she was moving out of her back house in the middle of West Hollywood. Leah Hubner, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you. I'm honored to be back. An honor to be one of the faves. That was a, I feel like a thousand years ago that you took those photos of me in your backyard house. Oh my God, you were a little baby. We were both babies. Let's be real. (laughs) Being like, what does this industry want from us? What does this town want? And here we are and we're still trying to figure out where we fit in this town. But I will say that I feel like you have blown up since then. Like you and everyone's definition of that is their own. But- You have moved into a full studio. You are booked within an inch of your life half the time. People can't get a time (laughs) slot with you. It really feels like it's upgraded quite a bit. Yes, yes. I mean, this town is large. And as much as it's like, oh, you know this person and this person, I feel very fortunate to live in this town with the job that I do because there's always more actors moving here every day. So that is how it just continues. It's just never ending. So I'm very fortunate. It helps that you're really good at your job. That is what actually does it. But yes, the the never ending supply of us getting older in the business. (laughs) So we are going to stick to our questions that we have pre-written for all of our photographers and And we'll bounce around and see where it goes. But our first question that comes up a lot for people is differentiating between what is a headshot session and what's like a branding or editorial session. So how do people really differentiate between these two things? So for me, I I know it's kind of different for all photographers. But for me, first of all, headshots are just that. They are shots of your head. 
So I feel like that kind of says exactly what you're going to get when we say headshot. Usually, you know, it's from like upper chest up. Sometimes we pull out. I find it's good to give a variety, like pulling out just a little bit so we can show clothing and whatnot. But for the most part, headshots are up your head. Branding, editorial, basically anything that you as an actor need more of your body in it other than like upper torso up that's when I feel like it switches to branding and editorial because the minute more of your body is involved the more time it takes the more we have to think about because I feel like when we're in headshot land what I care about is like what are we thinking what's happening if we're thinking character based if we're thinking essence based if we're thinking show based that kind of thing How can we pull that out? Whereas with branding and editorial, it's less about that. And it's more about like, how cool do I look? Or like whatever it is that you want to show off. And I just feel like it's hard to figure that out. I think the minute a body part gets involved also with bodies in general and how we feel about our bodies, it just takes more time, more nuance. And that's my big differentiation. Like, I promote on packages, you know, your mini session, we roughly say four to six looks. I used to do that based off of unlimited looks in 45 minutes, but people started coming in and being like, I need five headshot looks, but then I also need like two like editorial looking stuff. And I'm like, okay, the chances of us being able to get both of that is not very likely because like we can bang out a headshot look, especially if it's like Best Buy Helpful Honda Dealer Blue Polo. That'll take two minutes. We get it. We move on. We, you know, let's let's spend more time on the things that like we want to be playing or like we want to show. But if it's more like branding editorial and we need body involved, I say it takes three times the amount of time that a headshot look would because it just takes time because not everyone poses the same. Not everyone feels the same. So it's not like I have a formula where it's like, okay, okay, now you just need to like move your body like this and do that. Like it just takes time to find it. So to me, that's the big difference. So like we have like a whole editorial sheet breakdown that if we see editorial or branding, when an email comes through, we're like, okay, here's a sheet. Expect less looks. And there's just parameters around it. Branding editorial is endless. People can pull reference photos and it's like, cool, this is nowhere near my style whatsoever. I'm glad I have it because now I can try to get you there. But like, it's still going to be in my style because you're hiring me and what I'm good at. And so like, it's going to be my interpretation of that. So to me, I just find like branding editorial, it's it's limitless. And that is sometimes a really hard thing. If people are like, I need headshots and I need branding in 45 minutes. I'm like, Whoa, game on. Yeah. Well, and I think just thinking about in, in that perspective of saying that there is so much to be done, I think we think of a headshot as like, oh, it's like one little photo. Or there is the opposite side of the spectrum where we think, oh my God, this is so much. It's so much I have to get in. And and speaking of like a limited amount of time for a headshot session in particular, how many looks is too many looks? How many looks does most people need in a headshot session? How do we figure that out? Okay. To me, it just kind of depends on what is it that you're being asked to get, whether it's by your reps or like a casting director wants something from you or something in very particular. How can we achieve those while also achieving things that feel very like, I really want this. Because in my opinion, those people come and go. Reps come and go. Yes, we want to please. We're actors. We want to like, I'm the good student, which like be the good student. But also what else is it about you other than just being a good student? What else can we showcase and take photos of and capture? So I'm always like, if people come in and they're like, okay, I have 45 minute session. We roughly say four to six looks. We base that off of, I say four because some people bring makeup artists to like a 45 minute session. Sometimes makeup artists take longer than like I would or the person changing. So like makeup artists, if they're factored in, and especially if there's a change, if you're going from like natural makeup to like a smoked out, that's going to take time. So like realistically, let's focus on four. But oh, no, my makeup and hair pretty much stays the same the whole time. I'm just changing looks. That's when we say six. I feel like it's when people are like, I'm going to try and get through 10 looks in 45 minutes. I'm like, okay, 
I'm fast, but we'll see. Like that is literally if you have no, like, I don't need to mess with my hair. Everything stays exactly the same. And I'm just changing my shirt. Then it's like, okay, I can maybe do that. But I don't think people do that. They don't take advantage that much, but it does get down to like, okay, we got to prioritize. And I do help with that quite a bit when people arrive. It's like, cool, let's figure this out. Let's make a formula. If they haven't, favorite people are the ones who do have an idea of what they're doing. But if not, I'm also there to help with that. But yeah, so to me, too many looks is like, if we say four to six, don't bring in 10 to 12. Don't double it, please. Well, that just tells me too. I mean, it's good to have options, right? But it also, it sounds like that comes without a plan, like you just said. You also brought in the reps and the cast and directors and all the opinions we get. So how do you feel actors can better navigate all of the opinions they get on their headshots? Because you know how that feels. Your mom's like, oh, wow, you look so good with your hair down. And your agent's like, pull it back. We need to be intense. And then someone tells you in your acting class, like, you should really take a softer period piece headshot. And it's like, how do I get this all done in a short period of time? (laughs) Yeah, it gets down to like priority. But my biggest thing, is that I ask if someone comes in and they have some very, very specific looks planned, I like to know, was your rep wanting this? Was this you? Like, what is it? And do you feel like all of these, I'm going to say characters, but I, I like to switch the dialogue to more like all these different versions. Do they feel like you? Do they feel my biggest thing is like, I think the industry now is so over like, turn on a costume and be this thing. It's like, a version of myself that I want to show. That's where I like to go. If someone is like, this doesn't feel right, then I'm like, hey, is it you who needs this? Is this your rep who needs this? Okay, cool. It's your rep. We'll get it, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. We're just going to get it and move the F on because I want to spend the time on the things that you want to be pursuing or just feel like you. A lot of times people walk in and I'm like, which of these looks is the most you on an everyday. And they're like, some people absolutely know. They're like, this one, this feels like me. Some people are like, and I'm like, what about what you're wearing? What you wore to the shoot? Can we start in that? Because I want you to feel like you. You deserve to feel like this human who's also an actor who can also play these other things. That is how I like to navigate it. To me, it's a fine line. I want you to trust me as a people pleaser. I'm like, I want you to please those people. But at the end of the day, you are my client. I want you to feel pleased. I want you to walk out of here that if this person leaves, you drop your rep, whatever, you're not sitting here going, I really don't love my headshot. I want you to love your headshots. I want you to walk away being like, bye, manager. I don't care. I'm thrilled with these. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you got to live with them, not them. Knowing yourself is a huge part of this job. And it comes up so often in these conversations about acting, about reels, about headshots, about everything. And it feels like a much bigger topic that I will have to get into at a different time. But when you were actively auditioning, did you feel like you knew yourself and what headshots fit you? No, I knew the version of myself that was bookable. Oh, tell me what the difference between those things are. Well, personally, for me at that time, the bookable me was the very like aspirational, but like pretty, not too pretty, like can be a little funny, has it together, like the Subaru commercial. I did Subaru. I did delivery as far as like commercial goes, as well as in the theatrical realm. I was always the like, I got this, like, you can count on me. So it was always this, like, put together, friendly demeanor version of myself. And I would say the friendly side of me is very accurate to who I am as a human. But I feel like at that time, I also didn't know I was queer. I didn't know my, like, my truth. I feel like the minute I, like, was, like, by acting, realized I was queer, came out, it was just kind of like, oh, this is me and I don't really care. I think the version of me that was really bookable was the whitest pet version of myself. Just that perfect version. Whereas now I'm like, I feel so far away from that. If I was going out for that stuff now, I think I would actually decline those auditions because it doesn't feel accurate to me anymore. So 
I know it's one to talk that I'm like, who are you? But that's what I care more about because that's the journey that I have come to as a former actor now like human in the world is we all have something so unique. Like we can be talented, but sometimes it's just who you are as a human that is the most bookable, in my opinion. Yeah. If you would take a headshot today, what would it look like? Oh, Sam, I literally was telling this to a makeup artist today because we were talking about this like you look like what would be your you style? I, granted, that was not a thing seven plus years ago when no, I was. No, we're done with the, the you... stethoscopes, right? Like yes. now we're doing, it's like, it's so who yes. you are, which I think is this, it's literally why we're putting this headshot workshop together is because I feel like it's not getting explained properly and I'm so no, excited no. to talk about it more. But like who, would, what would yours look like? Keep telling me. Mine would absolutely, I told, I told this to Jen, I was like, I would have so many gold accessories. Like I would want to show my like stylish forward, like I love my gold chains. I feel like it gives me my little bit of queer, even though I love my like high femme kind of vibe as well. Like I would just make it my fashion. And I feel like, thanks to my stylist, Sophie Strauss, and shout out. I feel like I found way for my like queerness and identity to come out through how I'm like presenting in my clothes even though I love a very like feminine style I'm using binary terms only because that's all we got to work with but I like bows I like ruffles I like polka dots but like add a military jacket over top of it or like a chain on my hip pocket like and boom it throws this like level of like whoa it's not as high femme as I thought it was you know or whatever and that is what I would really want to make sure I'm showing in a headshot for myself okay well just for fun I do think you should take this at some point because I would like to see it and I think you should frame it but that's the journey right is that's the journey and that's when I actually encourage actors to actively take the stress out of this like yes do the work to get it right like not right but to fit for what you need but also take the stress out of it because you're gonna redo them in like a year or like maybe two if you're lucky but like you're gonna change you're gonna grow and like the you who was in your headshots previously doesn't represent the you now the you who took my first headshots even with you, that were great shots, are not who I am anymore. No, Sam has grown, baby. I'll I'll post some of those alongside this episode. I think there's one of me in like a football jersey and I'm all brunette and I'm like, (laughs) yep. Oh, I'll never forget the shorter brunette when you came in and it was like, God, that was wild, wild. I forgot that was with you. I'm like, wow. That was February of 2020. It was. Yeah. I was the only person my friend said who cut all their hair short before they after before. they got engaged. <laughs> yeah, hysterical. Hysterical. I see you. You're sitting in your car right now listening to this podcast thinking, oh, it's that time of year. I guess I should really get some new headshots. After the strike last year, I look a little different. I feel a little different. Maybe I want to get a new agent. Maybe I need to make my agent happier. Oh my God, I should just go sign up for headshots right now. And immediately you go into a panic mode, not knowing what you're going to do. How do you get the right headshots? Fast forward to the headshot class. Dun, dun, dun. We are teaching a headshot class between Sam and I, and you guys are invited. Yes. Guys, if you enjoy listening to myself and Gabrielle talk about our working actor life, we have learned so much about headshots and we are putting it all down for you guys. We get more questions about that than probably anything else. So we have decided to make a full class about it, specifically how to decide what it is your package is missing, how to get the headshots that fit those holes, and how to do them right. Not only that, but we also have some stuff leading up to it. Sam has a bunch of different podcasts coming out that's going to be all about the different photographers and what they like the best out of actors. You might even be listening to one of them now. So we are setting you up. That way you can join the headshot class and know exactly what you're getting yourself into. And by the end of it, know exactly what you need for your headshots. If this sounds like something you guys are looking for, and trust me, you need this class. I wish I would have had it so long ago. I've saved so much time and so much money. The class is February 16th. It will be 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, all held over Zoom. So anywhere across the world you can join in from. We will be doing a live work session where you guys will be able to work on the notes we give you. We will give you a full headshot guide. We will take you through the steps to get the shots you're missing. And there's even going to be follow-up afterwards. So we're going to make sure everyone 
gets all the information they need for their next headshots. And just in case you're wondering, what happens if you register for this class and you get booked and you can't actually be there? Don't you worry, it will be recorded and you will get your own recording because we want you to be able to use this in the future on other headshots as well. So think of it as an investment, not only for your headshots now, but for your headshots in the future. Oh, the amount of money I could get back if I could have this class first. Guys, sign up anywhere in the show notes for this podcast. It will also be linked in both of our social medias. Let us know if you can't find the link. We will definitely link you to it. We are so excited and spots will fill up fast because this is prime headshot time. So get signed up, get the guidance you need and stop getting shitty headshots. The one last thing I do want to make sure to say is the like your style thing. My one little liner is if you're extra, be extra. If you're not, that's okay too. Like there is no right way to show the you in your headshot. If you wear basics, if you keep it very minimal and simple, that's fucking great. If you like lots of accessories, that's also great. Just make sure it's authentic to you. People ask me all the time, what about jewelry? Like, should I? I'm like, if you would wear it with this outfit, because this is an outfit you would wear, then I'm good with it. If you're trying to wear jewelry because you're trying to think, will someone then don't worry about it. It's not needed. Yes. Yeah. I'm. That would be, we should put up, you should take this headshot so we can polarize the two of us because yours would be really, but mine's, my best shots are in like a plain white t-shirt. It's just who we are and it's okay. Absolutely. You don't have to try it. It's but perfect. It's yeah. so fun that way. That's where casting gets to see this very like different side of people and gets to be like, oh, wow, I get to know Sam just by this like, really lovely headshot of her you know are those some of the bigger mistakes you see actors making in their headshot sessions like being something they're not Mm -hmm. and like putting on costumes i try not to say it's a mistake because again it's less about the costume i I don't love it but i also am never gonna say no to it i'm not gonna be a photographer that says no i'm not doing that I want to give people what they want and need. And if at that moment, that is what they think they want and need, then I'm giving it to them. As long as authenticity comes out of it, I'm fine. And that's where I'm like, okay, I can make that happen. I can help with that. Because I do get people still coming in. There is a certain agent out there right now that everyone would know that is still having their people take photos in scrubs and stethoscopes and military and very, very typecast costumes. And people come in with their spirit of Halloween police uniforms. And I am like, okay, we'll get it. But we're gonna we're gonna get it quick and then we're gonna move on because you just need one of these. Yeah. I bet I know who it is. Let's tell you can tell me after. Are there things that you see actors stressing out about, for example, while they're shooting that they could release or things that you would like to soothe that stress people out in this process? Okay. Something that happens often is people walk in and immediately are like, oh my God, I'm nervous. And I'm like, great. I love that. That makes me really happy because that means that you care. And if you weren't nervous, if you were a little like, whatever, like it'll be fine. Then it's like, okay, then Maybe this isn't going to be as great, but like, if you're nervous, great. I can work with that. I can handle nerves. Like if you can tell me where you're at, I am great at making you not feel that way or being very conscious to like navigate around that. So my favorite people are the ones that tell me exactly where they're at the minute they walk in the door. What I find people stress about is time. But once we get shooting, people are like, oh, Oh, okay, we get it. So that usually flies out the window pretty quick. I think what I see people stressing about sometimes is makeup artists and seeing how slow some makeup artists can go. Some are fast, some are slow. I see it happening. Clients getting stressed about, I still have three more looks and we're still on this particular look that hair and makeup is just taking so much longer and like, oh my God. And so- I see people stress about looks a lot. Fortunately, I'm very quick to be like, I can help. Is there anything you're like married to? No, you're not. Okay, we can eliminate. I can tell you X, Y, Z. But I think that's kind of mostly it as far as stress. It's usually just kind of like nerves, looks and like time management. Yeah, great. Is there anything that bothers you during a session? Do you have any photographer pet peeves? My, one of my biggest, and I know sometimes we can't control this, but is 
people being late to very short session when it's a 45 minute session and they're 25 minutes late. And I am like, how can we not have? And then it's up to me to make a miracle happen. And I always do. I had one person come in. They had seven minutes left of their 45 minute time slot. And I got them three looks in that time. Because I'm a wizard and I know how to like keep it flowing. Fortunately, they were also comes from a modeling background. So they're not shy in front of the camera. They don't have nerves as far as like, you know, so there was that added bonus. But yeah, that is my biggest pet peeve because it's like I can't do my job to the best and I can't give you everything I want to give you if you don't show up on time. I want to give you the world. So just do me if I'm here on time. I am never late. I am always going to be there that it's just like, I would love for you to show up on time so that I can give you your needs. And okay, another little pet peeve that I'm noticing is coming up as a queer person, as a person who is in a relationship with a non-binary person, I am all about breaking the binary and like trying to de-gender as much as possible. And I get very sad when people come in and start gendering their clothing. Interesting. Wait, tell me more. I don't know about this. So once I say it, you'll be like, oh, I know what you're talking about. But like, she's going to be like the little barista. And then like this girl's going to like blah, 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 which is like cute and fine. And I get it. But I'm like, we don't need to gender clothing. Come on. This is great. I feel like I always learn something in your sessions because you are so in that world and you share so much about it and you're all about making it a safe space for everyone to come into your space. And so I always learn something when we talk about this stuff. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not the worst thing in the world. And I know it happens. I know it's like just part of our language and how we talk sometimes, but I try to be really conscious, like, especially if I get an expansive person in and if they do it, I'm like, Hey, want to make sure like, for example, if some if someone who's non binary comes in and is like, I need a mom look, I'm like, is that language good for you? Is that a word you're okay using for yourself? Or can we substitute it with parent? Like, what is that a word from your rep? Like, or is that good for you? And if people are like, no, 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 I'm good with mom, then it's like, okay, then I'm going to call it a mom look. I totally get it. But like, if they're like, no, you know, then it's like, great, it's a parent look. We, we can just call it that or mm-hmm. then the nurturing look. There's many other ways we can describe things that it's like if we can just break out of the binary a little bit, just a personal professional pet peeve that happens is when people are like, she's it's less about like this girl or this thing as a cis woman feels different because that's more based on like my character, what I'm going for. It's the like she this clothing item is a she or is a he. And I'm like, Oh, but I'm never going to be like, can you not do that? I just let it go. But as a personal pet peeve, that's one that I'm like, I heard it. Well, I will say thinking of different terminology is also helpful to us to put a better look behind the eye, to put more acting, you know, to put the the character awareness into us other than just mom. It's like there's so many different types of mother figures, father figures, parental guidance. Like, so are you kind of an absent parent? Are you, like you said, nurturing? Are you in a sitcom and you're always baking the cookies? Or are you like, there's just so many things that we could do with that. And that's, there's so, we can get more specific. I totally, totally agree. Yeah. It's like when people say, I need a mom look. I'm like, okay, what kind of mom are we? Are we a camping mom? Are we a granola mom? Are we a farmer's market mom? Like, There's so many different versions. We got to be more specific. Are we a Tide Mom where everything's like squeaky clean? Like it's dirty, but we're still positive about it. Yoga Mom, are you at Alfred's Coffee every Saturday at 7 a.m.? Like what? Yes. Will you take us through for actors who are like, oh my gosh, I really like her vibe. I want to shoot with her. If I were to book a spot with you, will you walk us through the process of shooting with you and kind of like step by step how that goes? Yeah, you can come up to 10 minutes early. I allow everybody 10 minutes early so that they can come in. We can discuss looks, really go through. I always ask, what are your needs? What do you want today? What are you hoping to achieve? Are we going commercial? Are we going theatrical? Are we doing a little mix of both? Then we break down like more clothing, really get a game plan. 
if they have hair and makeup involved, it's like, okay, we're going to go in order of what needs to happen as far as hair and makeup goes. I always like to get a sense of what are you talking? Okay, it's theatrical. We we need some theatrical. What kind of stuff are you targeting? Like what kind of shows are you wanting to be on? What kind of shows if you are actively auditioning? What kind of shows do you get called in for regularly? What kind of roles? Knowing is this Netflix or is this HBO? The Last of Us is a very different looking show than Sex Lives of College Girls. And I think with my shoot, when talking through clothing and types and what we're going for show wise, commercial wise, I think what commercial is it? Are we Tide Mom or are we Subaru Mom? Because those look totally different. You know, I want to know all of those things so that I think in color. I think, okay, The Last of Us. If I were looking at The Last of Us, Mayor of Easttown, Ozark. Everything is in gray. Everything is like dark grays, greens, blues, but like cool gray tones. Whereas if we think of like Netflix, sex education, boo bitch, to all the boys I ever loved, everything is more colorful. Everything is quite vibrant. It's not as vibrant as Disney Nickelodeon and multicams like the Goldberg, but there's still a saturated vibrancy to it. Same goes with Sex Lives of College Girls. Even though it's on HBO, it's younger, it's college. I say it's more jewel tones. It's saturated, punchy stuff, but it's not as Netflixy. It's like, what are the shows? What are the tones? Okay, that's what we're going for. I'm going to drop you in there. Then I choose background colors based off of all of that. So like, say someone is like, I need a very Gen Z look. Okay, are we in Netflix, Sex Education, or are we in HBO, Sex Lives of College Girls? Because those both look different. Cool. We're going to use the brighter colors. I need both. Great. Then we're going to do both so that we can get both. And not only do we think about color, when I tell you what color we're using and what network or show we're on, we are going to also think that way. So that's when we get to be actors. And that's That's a big thing. I know that was one of the questions is like, how can you make people feel more comfortable is I'm like, yo, what is it you're good at? What is it you've been training in acting? Let's not be afraid to do that in our headshot session. If anything, like we should be doing it here more than anywhere, because this is our first glance that casting gets to see us. And if when casting is looking through thousands of photos, if you aren't afraid to go there in your headshot, then they're going to be like, great. I know that they're going to like show up in the audition room. It doesn't mean like go like, but like if there's just this like sense of life that comes through that we just automatically like want to lean in, then they're going to be like, great, I need to see what this person is capable of. So I want to see their audition. So my big thing is like, don't leave acting at the door just because it's a still photograph. And I tell people, I'm like, move, be a human. This is not about posing. I'm never going to tell someone unless it is a period piece shot where they are specifically watching something very like Bridgerton vibes. But I'm never going to pose people like chin up, look down. You know, it's like be fluid, be organic, be a human and therefore be an actor. And that's where we get the best shot. Then we shoot, they get their looks. Then we talk about what happens next. They usually get their photos within a couple hours, high res, unedited shots. They get the full gallery. I'm not a photographer that like holds onto the photos and say, you can't use them unless they've been edited by me. They're yours to do whatever you please with. So that's kind of the session. Amazing. I want to ask you too, when actors come in with guidance and direction and ideas and specifics, does that help you in your work? Does it limit you? Absolutely. How how does it work? No, I love anytime someone's like, I found you on What Broke Actress or something. These are all people that come in with a spreadsheet showing me exactly what they're like. They have the plan. (laughs) My people. My people. They have thoughts next to it. And to me... That's amazing. I'm great at doing that in the moment, but it's also really helpful because it's less work for me to have to create just off of like meeting someone. I'm like, great. I see this. We can expand on this. Like, I'm going to give you a couple extra thoughts here that are going to change this. But now I have a foundation to go on. So I love it. I can kind of handle both. I can handle the people who are fully unprepared. And then I can really handle the people who are fully prepared and all in between. But it's always a great thing when people come extremely prepared. That would be my like number one thing is really have an idea. You don't have to have every single, you can bring options for each like look, character, vibe you're going for. 
you can bring a couple clothing options. But yeah, the more more of a plan, the more I can achieve it. You show me what you want. I want to do it. I'm going to give you that exact thing with your version of that. Yes. Ugh. So that's all my questions. Is there anything else that you think actors need to know coming into headshots or planning them right now? I think it's really that sense of we get what you need, you know, mom and rep and all of that, but really make sure you're also getting stuff for you. I think the biggest thing that we forget is like in six months, if something changes, will I still like these for myself? And another key advice I love to give is like, everybody has a favorite side of their face. Everyone's got a favorite side. And I think that I had like this like aha moment. The side we like the most of ourselves is usually the side we have the most control over. So we can manipulate it the most. The side that we don't show as much or we don't favor is usually the side that is more vulnerable. And so as an actor, you got to show both. Because are we going for, I am post-apocalyptic, I am the last of us, I have to show the weight of that and come off like, nothing can affect me. Great. Let me show this side. But do I need to show the vulnerability behind that as well? Let me show my other side. It's shooting ourselves in the foot as an actor if we don't allow for range of motion in our headshots, if we just stick to our good side. And I think social media has really made that more difficult for people to like love whatever side they don't love as much. But as an actor, it's going to be the meaty side. It's going to be the side we all go, ooh, there's something different there. So yeah, coming in, being prepared, but also being ready. Like when I was acting, you prepare, prepare, prepare so that when you arrive, you can just throw it all away and trust that it's there and you can play and explore. And that's exactly how I feel like headshots should be. If you know what you're doing, if you got a plan, if you memorize your lines, if you did all that stuff, then like we're going to get some really great shots because you're actually going to be present with me. And like as your scene partner, I take the role of a scene partner. I'm like, as your scene partner, we get to actually have like special moments, you know, like you get to surprise me. Yes. Oh. Leah, you're amazing. I think you're so good at what you do and you bring so much to just the industry and also people. I can't tell you how many people have told me I'm so I'm so nervous. I have so much going on and they plan their headshots and they go to see you and they tell me I'm seeing Leah and I'm like, oh, you're fine. Don't you worry. And then they finish and they're like, she's great. Can she follow me around all the time? And I'm like, yes, for a price. <laughs> but you you do such lovely work and you make actors so comfortable because you are one of us. And so I just I just love what you do. So thank you so much for your time and energy and all your stuff. Oh, thank you.